I am uh, Peter Oreck, and um, I got started in Federation in its predecessors. Uh, I was involved in the Combined Jewish Appeal, and I was involved in the other organization that was sort of a, a local planning body. Um, there, it, it was apparent that we had a problem in that both sides never talked to each other. And um, it was sort of recognized in the community that the only way to pull this community, which was growing dramatically, it was growing literally by leaps and bounds by thousands of people, and there was a need to try to develop a sense of community in Vancouver. And we were very lucky because um, Arthur Folks, Lois Rafel, uh, they spearheaded a group of which I was lucky enough to be part of to try and come up with an organization that could serve as a central uh, fundraising and planning organization, but more than that, be recognized as a way to bring the community together. Uh, this community was a Israel first community in those days. Almost all the money, over 75% of the money we raised went to Israel, which was great. I, I, I am a Zionist forever. My Zeta walked from Russia to Palestine, but our local institutions couldn't survive on the money that was being raised. So, as I say, I had been involved in the Combined Jewish Appeal part, but then we, through uh, Arthur and Lois and really Bob Coleman, because if it wasn't for Bob Coleman, there probably wouldn't have been a federation because he was a very pro-Israel guy who was prepared to step back and say, we need this community to grow and he became the first president, and um, I was lucky enough to be part of those worlds. Your first official title, for lack of a better term, in Federation was? You know, good question. Um, I'm not getting younger. I, I was uh, a bunch of things, but I guess the first thing I really was of any major importance in the Federation, was I was the um, general chair of the um, 1989 uh, campaign. And um, that was a unique time for two reasons. Uh, first, because uh, I have a background in, I'm a lawyer, but my background is in, in business and marketing, and it was I had made up my mind. We had a great president then, Dan Pekarsky, but I had, and, and he was a terrific businessman. I had sold him on the idea that we had to come up with a way to put this campaign on a business model, and we had to have a marketing plan. We'd never had a, we'd had marketing strategies, I suppose, but we'd never had a real plan. And we were really lucky that Chuck Weinberg agreed that he would head the uh, marketing committee and, and draw up a plan. And you know, it's very interesting. How do you motivate people? How do you get a team together? How do you motivate them? You can't pay them. You can't really do much for them. But um, we managed. And we managed because we had great leadership within, not me, but the people that I worked with. and. Um, and uh, it was successful. Um, we also did one other thing that if you were to say what are things I'm really proud I was part of, we'd never had a, uh, a mission. Never had a mission in Vancouver, never had a community mission. And we decided that we were gonna take a community mission to Poland and Israel. And we were going to do it in a unique way. We were gonna try and get every Jewish organization to send its president and its professional, and also get other people who were involved in, in federation. Well, it was a problem because those organizations didn't have the money to pay for their professionals. So I remember going to someone who I cannot speak 
it's, it's not possible to speak high enough about him, and that's Gordon Diamond. And Gordon, I had been his vice chairman in the campaign when I before, and he'd agreed to do top gifts when I was the chair. And I said to him, Gordon, we got to raise this money for these people. There's no way that, that they can come. And uh, he looked at me, he said, well, Peter, I'll give you the money. I said, no, Gordon, you're the largest gift in the, in the community, your family. I don't want you to give them the money. And he turned to me and he said words I've never forgotten, which was, Peter, having money is so you can do good things for people. Pick up the check in the morning. And that made it possible for us to bring people on a mission where we could really see what it meant to be a community. Um, going to Poland, seeing Israeli students at Auschwitz and then coming to Israel, um, being in Warsaw and watching a Orthodox rabbi call a Reform rabbi to the Torah and call him rabbi watching the two of them when we were at Yad Vashem wearing each other's hats and crying in each other's arms. Uh, it was a great community mission in the sense that it really did solidify things. So that was my first position. I was extremely lucky. My wife was the chair of the women's campaign. Anything good that ever came out of that campaign should be attributed to her. Um, she came up with the slogan, um, many hands, one heart, and um, and she was a terrific partner in this. Anyways, that that was the first role I played, and after that, I had other roles, and eventually, I was elected president. In terms of other roles, any specific uh, you know, challenges I, that come to mind associated uh, with any of those roles? Look, I was the vice president of financial resources. We had all sorts of issues. You know, I'm happy to, today it's a different world. They're raising a lot of money. It's wonderful and the, the leadership and, and, and Ezra should be proud of themselves for the job they're doing. But in those days, um, in the early 1990s, we had a fracture in this community. We had, for reasons that aren't important to get into, the Orthodox withdrew themselves from our community to some extent, and a whole bunch of gifts got canceled. And when I became president in 1982 was, how do we, how do we transform this federation so that it is not just for one part of the community, but that all of the community feels that it's part of it? We never had a kashrut policy. Well, we decided we're going to have one so that Orthodox people don't feel that they're a part, but they are part of the Federation. Um, and we were, we were very lucky to have some rabbis who understood it, and we were lucky to have people in the observant community who wanted to bring us back together. And, um, and I had a wonderful campaign chair in Howard Carby, and we were able to rebuild the campaign and we were able to begin um, transforming us so that the community felt they, we were one and part of the same thing. So, um, but times were different then, but some of the problems, you know, we couldn't afford to pay uh, for every Jewish kid who wanted a Jewish education. We did, we, we did as much as we could, but we couldn't do enough, and we still got that problem today. We didn't have a Jewish high school. Today, thank God, we have a great Jewish high school. Um, we had problems with continuity, Jewish continuity. We were losing Jews as rapidly as they were coming to Vancouver. We were losing them uh, partially to intermarriage, but partially just because it's a big community in terms of geographic area. You can get lost here easily. And how did we find a way of connecting with them? Um, but we did some things that were good. We, we built, it's now called the foundation, it was in the endowment fund. We held, and, I, and, and thank God we did, we held a dinner to honor our folks. 
and we raised a lot of money and we got our first million dollar gift uh, doing it because we needed to make people understand that it isn't just paying the operating costs, you got to provide for the future. And, um, you know, Risa Levine was the co-chair of that event and did a fantastic, uh, fantastic job. And, um, and we, I'm glad to say we, we raised a lot of money and we raised the profile of what is now the foundation, which is now a terrific success. So, you know, th some things change, some things remain the same. You know, we were lucky. We had some very good leaders. We had some very good people who spent enormous amounts of time. And we also had very good professional leadership. You know, Drew Staffenberg, he came to become the executive director at the same time as I became president. And Drew understood how to, that just how important making community feel comfortable, making organizations feel that we weren't trying to run them, we were trying to work with them. He was terrific in that respect. So I would say those are some of the things that I could look back on and, uh, and remember. Um, but today it's, it's different. Today they have much more professional staff and excellent professional staff. And today they have a campaign that allows them to do many of the things we dreamed of doing but couldn't do. But um, it would not have happened without people like Arthur and Lois and Bob Coleman. It just would never have happened. I was so lucky to be exposed to so many people that knew so much more than I did, who were, um, I sat on the International Jewish Federation Board that met in the States. I met people the likes of which I'd never had exposure to, uh, people around the Brompton Foundation, people, rabbis, the, the study groups were fantastic. The understanding of what a Jewish leader is about as opposed to just a leader. The rabbis in this community that I, I was exposed to, whether it was giving their Devar Torahs or, or being welcomed into their shuls. Um, I learned first how little I knew and secondly I learned how much I had to learn Judaically and, and about how to treat people. You know, it's, I was young. I, I was probably too young, but it was a young community and, and you just did your best. But um, so when I, how did it impact me? On the whole, I would say it was the most positive experience of my life. It, it, it made me a better person. That's what I would say about it, how it impacted on me. Why is Federation important? Because if you don't have an organization that plans and raises money, not just for itself, but for everybody, we don't have a sense of being in this together. We don't, we'll never build consensus. We'll never, um, yes, some strong organizations will, 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 will thrive, but that's not community. Community is looking after the smallest, but sometimes the most important organizations. You know, we had to learn how to raise money for not just Jewish day schools, but supplemental schools to recognize that not every child is going to end up in a full-time Jewish education, but they need education. Is there anything else you'd like us to know that we haven't had a chance to talk about yet today? Anything leaping to mind at all? The only thing that leaps to mind is to say to people, look, you're never going to agree with everything the Federation does. You're never going to agree because we're all strong-willed, strong-minded people, and we all have organizations we support. But first, give as you live. You know, if, if you can afford to live that well, you can afford to give. Secondly, words matter. Words, I remember when Rabin was assassinated and they talked about the Torah portion, Kititse, where it talked about how words really do matter and how what you say and what you say about an organization. 
We need to be positive. We need to find ways of working together. We need to remember in that same Torah portion where it says, look, if you build a, 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 a house for the flat roof, you got to put a fence out there. Why do you have to put a fence? Because you had to recognize that you have to plan that someone could fall off. But we need to raise money for our endowment fund because we, we've got all these organizations and if we don't look after them, they're going to fall off and we can't afford it. So I just say to people, even though you don't agree with everything, you've still got to support it. And if you really don't believe in what they're doing is right, get out there and change it. Mm -hmm.